Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How does my husband feel about me being a housewife? Now, if you guys watch my channel, you would have seen that I do a lot of family vlogs and a lot of luxury content, but there's one sure thing, there's one sure way to get me back on the channel when I'm having one of my infamous breaks, which I really need to stop taking, but I just can't help it, it happens. But the one thing that's gonna get me back on here is a juicy conversation. I love a juicy conversation. It's not necessarily something that I got offended by. This message is something so relevant to the current climate, which is being a woman, that I thought, I just love having a chat with you guys. I have some of the most intelligent people in my audience. I love hearing your opinion. I've been very active on my Instagram. I talk on there a lot. I'm on the stories every day. And then I thought I'm abandoning my YouTube family. The reason I do that guys is because I'm aware that a lot of you are little luxury addicts as I tend to be. Oh, light change, light change. We're getting serious, light change. Um, as I also tend to be but I, I love a deep and meaningful conversation. So I thought I would just come back on here and just have a chat with you guys. And instead of doing a lazy little how I've been update or let's do a q and I thought I would talk about this amazing message I got on my Instagram, which asked me how my husband feels about me being a housewife. First things first, we need to define what housewife is. So we need to Google thesaurus dictionary search that thing. Housewife, a woman whose main occupation is caring for a family, managing household affairs, doing housework while her husband or partner works. I did a Q and A on my Instagram and that was one of the questions. I loved it. Not because I thought it was a deeply intelligent question, not because I thought that the person was genuine or kind when they asked it, but because I thought it was very synonymous and very example making of the type of attitude women have towards each other. The question asker was obviously a woman because a man wouldn't bother asking that stupid question. I'm joking, it was not stupid, it's very good. The reason I liked it, at first, it didn't even cross my mind as that interesting or amazing, but it came across to me as very needing of a debate, a heated conversation. So I thought I'd bring a different topic to this. When I answered the question, of how my husband feels about me being a housewife on my Instagram. When I answered that question quite flippantly and quickly, I didn't realize the reaction it would have. I had so many people writing into me from both sides of the spectrum about how either rude they thought that question was, or what does a housewife even mean, or how lucky one would be to be just a housewife, just a housewife, or didn't I also work? They were confused. It was a question that had a lot of women talking and when something gets a lot of women talking, it means it needs to be talked about. Now, the question is multi-layered. First, we can discuss the question asker and their intention. I don't think the question asker's intention can be dissected without them actually being here and represented themselves. But I know one thing is that a lot of female progress in the world is made slower and sticks are put in the wheels of it by essentially other women's attitude towards women. I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's a biological symptomatic thing, but boys and men have more of a boys club attitude towards other men. And no matter how much women preach a woman's woman or girl's girl attitude, why is there fluff on my face? When there isn't that about men, I can't say that in a, conclusive way because there might be you might have many examples and of course let's talk about it in the comments but I've noticed a trend there not with myself because I think energy and boundaries are really taken in by other people so I hardly ever get people telling me judging my motherhood judging my lifestyle judging anything about me in that way I hardly ever get it and that's the honest truth and I think the reason is because I have a deep confidence and deep rooted confidence about how I conduct myself I don't look into people's eyes looking for validation. And that's another video um, that we can have at another time. It's something I don't look for in other people. So when people say that they get judged on their motherhood styles and what they did, breastfed, didn't breastfed, how they gave birth, I hardly ever get that. Because when a person sees me, they look in my eyes, they look into what I'm doing, they know that the, the fence is up. I am not receiving that. Some person told me, watch 
this is what I don't like about the phrasing of that sentence. Your son is using a dummy at a year and a half. Watch what's going to happen to his teeth. Don't witchcraft me. Don't tell me watch what's going to happen. Block. That's what's going to happen to you. That's what's going to happen to you. Blockity, blockity, block. Because that's not a discussion. That's a watch, blah, blah, blah. You don't know me. My son looks larger, but he's a year and a half years old at the time when I got that message. You're going to be blocked. So I don't take that kind of um, attitude towards me. So I rarely get it. But a lot of women get a lot of judgment. And I see that online. So after I got this comment and I answered it very simply that I feel happy that I can in my life afford to look after my child and stay at home while my husband works. Now I answered that question very plainly and very simply because I just didn't want to go into it and I had many questions on my Instagram. But if we really delve into it, which we're going to do here, there's so many layers of that question that are problematic towards women just furthering themselves. Number one, and this is the most plain and simple thing that I'm going to say to you guys, and I know you know this because you're smart ass people, but a lot of people don't understand. Where on earth do you start to even begin to imagine that people's life that they portray on social media is exactly the reality of their life or situation? Can we just wake up and be adults for a second? When did we start to believe that? It's like back in the day when people used to see people from days of our lives and Raul killed Monica or somebody and they'd be like, Raul, how could you kill Monica? And the actor, George, is like, um, I'm George. I'm George Pablo. Like why I'm not Raul, you know? And now we're living in exactly the same era, but moved along a little bit where people believe that social media characters are real. No matter how real I am being right now in this moment, in this conversation, and I am being real, this is exactly me. This is how I talk. I'm, this is how I act. All of my friends know I'm not putting anything on. You're not gonna get the reality of my life. I'm not gonna tell you the ins and outs because it's impossible to, it's impossible to. Especially when, when you start branding yourself as somebody online, especially when safety concerns come into it. Nobody's gonna tell you exactly where they live or how they act or what they do or who's in their family or the ins and outs. It makes me laugh so much when they're like, oh, but who's your child with or something. I hardly get it because I said I've got strong boundaries and they can tell that, but I watch other content creators and they're like, oh, you left your child alone in the house or something or you blah, blah, blah. I didn't take your child on this holiday. Maybe they're just not filming their child, boo-boo. Like, you guys have to really realize, not you, not my smart, intelligent, beautiful audience. I'm now talking to the people who've come here randomly and um, are being enlightened. You have to realize that part of it's a marketing machine, part of it's branding, and some of it is real life, just human beings coming here online to talk to you, but you're never gonna see the whole of their life. So when the question was posed to me, how does my husband feel about me being a housewife? How do you know I'm a housewife? How do you know I'm a housewife? I'm a lifestyle content creator, and maybe my lifestyle choice to present to you is to say that this is how I live, da da da. You don't know where I work. You don't know what I do. And I'm just saying this to you to protect you and your own self-esteem and to cut the naivety. Cut it. Stop it. That's not how you advance in life. You know that perfectly well. You know what I mean? You don't know that. You've bought into a reality that I've created online. And people who follow me and know me know it might, might be real. But how do you know I'm a housewife? Why are you letting that cut you? Why are you letting that be your mirror in, against which you measure yourself? Because I know if you're writing that to me, you're writing more than that to other people. You're believing she's a housewife. You're believing that she's a billionaire. You believe all she does is lounge on yachts. You don't know. You don't know that that girl who's on yachts in Dubai might have to do whatever she needs to do to be in that position. That might be something unpleasant she's gonna do. That might be the fact that that's actually her yacht and she works. That might be that that's her dad's. That might be that it's a yacht that's rented, but it's there to sell an image. Why are you believing what you're seeing online? That's first of all. Second of all, class, moving on to the next subject. A juicy one. The idea that people have that a marriage between two people isn't discussed or created by those two people. 
So in the phrasing of that question of how my husband feels about me being a housewife, let's say I am, for argument's sake, let's say that person is, what makes a person feel that they're gonna come in and say, how does he feel about you being a housewife? As if I or a woman can come in and molest her husband into making her a housewife. Surely that couple agreed. Surely you're observing and perusing into a marriage that has a connotation of a conversation behind it. These people met, they dated, they married. This isn't some kind of like, you get a wife, you get a wife, you get a wife. Your wife happens to be a football player. Your wife happens to be an archer. and Your wife happens to be a housewife. How does he feel about having a housewife? Surely there's a conversation and he picked that, you know? So the phrasing of the question is again, this strange woman to woman interaction of how does he, how does he feel about you being a housewife? Um, the same as your husband would feel about you going to a grocery store. You called him, you said, I'm going to a grocery store. Yes, we need some orange and apples. And then you went like, the more appropriate and poignant question would be, how did you and your husband decide who works and who looks after the child? And what percentage of work do you do? And who does the housework? Because maybe you're asking in a genuine way to plan your life because you see me or Jessica or Emma or Rochelle, you want to emulate that. So asking a question from an admiration point of view is fantastic because mentorship between women needs to happen more. So I would have asked that question in that way if you admire and ask, because you're just cutting yourself down again. You're making it that women do not conduct and build their own lives and that somehow it just happened that way. It doesn't just happen that way. If a woman's an intelligent woman, she has built her life in that way purposefully. Lastly, not lastly, this is second to last point. Uh, the reason I answered that question with, it's a privilege to be a housewife, even though I didn't delve into my life and how I've conducted it and what's a housewife. Because once you're a mum, you're not a housewife. You know what I mean? Because being a mum is a whole job, let me tell you. If someone told me, because I've worked full-time job, I've worked a part-time job, I've worked night jobs, I've worked day jobs, I've worked entrepreneurial jobs, I've worked jobs like modeling, and I've worked jobs like waitressing on my feet from morning to night in casinos and nightclubs, right? On a day, a full day as a parent, versus a full day on your feet in a nightclub or restaurant, the parenting job can be harder. Any mum would agree with that. It's more fulfilling. Ah, ah, wait, keyboard warrior, blah, blah, wait, I'm not finished. It's more fulfilling. You're not gonna get fulfilled serving people who are drinking in a nightclub, right? So when it's more fulfilling for, for the soul, of course, you would rather do that. Because no one's saying, I would rather do the easier job. I would rather do the harder job, but it's harder. So how does your husband feel about you being a housewife? Completely cuts out the mothering role. So when I answered the question, I answered it fundamentally to open the perception of the asker and the audience to what the mothering role is and not to actually answer for myself because I don't need to validate or prove myself to anybody. 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 Yeah? I'm answering more to open a conversation which it did people talking to me. That's why I decided to make a video on it because that kind of question goes over my head, doesn't bother me, but it makes for such an interesting conversation and a mind opener for women, you know? It's a privilege to be a stay at home mum. And I think that's what that question was implying. Me personally, if I could have it my way in any trajectory of life, unless my job was a deep passion without which I could live, I would want to be there for my young child for as long as I could. Not for a teenager, as in like staying at home, but for my young child, I wanna be at their beck and call, I wanna be taking them everywhere, I wanna be raising them, and that's not celebrated. There's a problem, a deep-seated problem, where women are constantly cut down and criticized with the changes of society, and that needs to stop. Before it was celebrated to be a homemaker and look after your children, and questions were asked in the what is wrong with you framework of career women. 
Now, the lens has shifted. You're meant to be a career woman, match men's salaries, match men's tenacity at work. And the reason I say that is because men don't have to take time out to have children. I don't care who you are, you will take time out to have a child. If you have a child, you're not gonna birth them on the conference floor at work, yeah? So you're gonna have to take that time out. They're trying to match that. And the lens has shifted where if a woman wants to be a homemaker, what is wrong with her? I don't care to partake in either of those frameworks. And that is why I answered that question in a way as to say it's a privilege to be a stay-at-home mom. It's also, if the question was asked differently of me, I would say it's a privilege to be able to work. Because let's think about it, sometimes when a woman has five children, it's financially much more sensible for her not to work. She has to not work in order to look after the children because daycare for all five children, three children even, let's not exaggerate, three children will be more expensive than her actually working. So maybe it's a privilege for her to work. Maybe it's a privilege for her to stay at home. This one or that one are both privileges. To have a child is a privilege. To be able to access the internet and speak to other women is a privilege. To celebrate each other is a privilege because the more you celebrate each other, the more you will expand and grow because you have gratitude. And gratitude is the expander of, of personal growth and appreciation. I love all women's choices, except for those that are violent and horrible. But as long as a mother has good intentions, whether she has to stay at home and she doesn't love it, you know what I mean? But she's doing that for her children, fantastic. If she has to go to work to provide for her children, that's fantastic. I come from a long line of women who had to work to look after their children. So when that question is asked, it is asked, you know, how does your husband feel at the deficit of you being a wife in the house? Let's not do that to each other. Yeah. Everything is a privilege. I am, pr I am so privileged to have had my son. I am so privileged to be able to stay at home with him. Number one, don't believe what you see online is true. You don't know who works, who doesn't, who and what they do. Number two, understand obviously the marketing machine and what it all is. People make money online. There is never gonna be absolute pure transparency in an online world. It can't happen with safety reasons, everything. Secondly, let's hold each other up more as women. That's what needs to happen. You're doing that, your children are good and safe and happy, good. You're doing that, you don't have children, you don't want them, but you're good and safe and happy, great. You, great, you, great, 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 great. Gratitude is the answer, baby. So, this video is not scripted, just talking off the top of me head, just to reconnect with you guys, to start to have that conversation and to, you know, it's really easy to get me online to talk about themes or subject because that's what I like to do. I just like to talk, don't I, about something a bit deep in it. So if you have a subject you want me to discuss, put it down in the description box below. This theme has no ending. It's a continuous open span thing but it's things I love to discuss and I love women I think I don't know if you believe it or don't believe it but you choose your body you come into maybe or maybe God chooses it for you in this life for a reason and I think women have so much potential and we're forgetting our power and one of the ways we are diminishing it is by talking to each other in a way like that you know anyway love you lots like jelly tarts and I'll see you on the next one